Hi, I'm Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. Let's have a quick discussion about temperature unit conversions. So before we can really talk about a temperature unit conversion, let's just define temperature very briefly for where we are in general chemistry. In essence, we're used to thinking about temperature as meaning how hot something is. What we're going to come to find out is temperature is a really good idea of understanding how fast particles are moving. But we're going to get into that definition later when it's more appropriate. But for right now, we're going to focus on what we're used to, which is how hot something is. There's three typical ways that we're going to measure temperature. They are the Fahrenheit scale, the Celsius scale, and the Kelvin scale. Let's talk about some of the differences and some of the similarities quickly. So here are three thermometers. Um, and this comes from the OpenStax textbook and the link uh, listed here below. The, here are three thermometers that are all measuring the exact same temperature. So let's imagine that all three of these were st sticking into the exact same uh, pot of water or beaker of water. There are some key similarities and there's some key differences. So first, let's all just acknowledge that water is only going to boil at one specific temperature. What you label that temperature to be may change, but the water itself is only going to truly boil at one temperature. In this case, this pot of imaginary water that our thermometers are in is boiling. We know that because we're looking up here at the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scale, and we know the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, uh, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's where the red line happens to be um, in the thermometer. Just as water is only going to boil at one temperature, water is going to freeze at one temperature, no matter what you label it. In the Celsius scale, we label freezing at zero, in the Fahrenheit scale, we label it at 32. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit is where water freezes. Zero degrees Celsius is where water freezes. These are pretty common temperatures that we, uh, you've probably got a reasonable amount of experience with. Um, if you were around during the polar vortex that happened uh, years back, uh, the wind chill in Indianapolis got really dreadfully cold. And I think at one point in time, it reached negative 40 degrees. Well, is it negative 40 degrees Celsius or negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, just by chance, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 40 degrees Celsius are the exact same. That's just by chance. Um, it was bound to happen somewhere on the thermometer and it happens to hit at negative 40 for both of them. That's just your fun little bit of trivia for the day. So on our thermometers, we have Let's take a look at the Celsius one because it's honestly pretty easy and straightforward. Water freezes at zero. It boils at 100. There are 100 individual marks, 100 individual degrees between the freezing point and the boiling point. So there's 100 Celsius degrees, individual measurements, between the freezing point and the boiling point. If we go over to the Fahrenheit scale, we have 180 individual Fahrenheit degrees, little tick marks between the freezing point and the boiling point of water. This is going to be important when we start thinking about how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit, this 180 to 100 ratio. Now, the temperature scale we haven't talked about yet is Kelvin. And Kelvin, if Celsius makes sense to you, Kelvin is even easier. Um, why do I say Kelvin is easier? One, a Celsius temperature can have negative values. You can see this negative 40 down here. A, uh, negative 40 uh, degrees Celsius down here. Kelvin will never have a negative value. In fact, zero Kelvin is the theoretical coldest temperature that we're going to be talking about for this course. We say it's the coldest temperature because it is theoretically where all motion stops in atoms. Um, they no longer are moving around. So zero Kelvin is as cold as it gets. Another term for it is absolute zero. 
Now, by chance, um, the Kelvin scale has zero Celsius being equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin. Please note there's no degree Kelvin there. It's just Kelvin. The boiling in Kelvin is 373.15 Kelvin. Well, in Celsius, it's 100. So that means there's 100 Celsius degrees for a change between freezing to boiling. There's 100 Kelvin degrees between freezing and boiling of water. So in essence, then, if we want to convert between a Celsius to a Kelvin temperature, all we're going to have to do is, depending, either add or subtract 273.15, and we're going to end up with the appropriate unit. So if we're going from Celsius to Kelvin, Kelvin we'll add 273.15. If we're going from Kelvin to Celsius, we're going to subtract 273.15 because the degrees move at the exact same increment. There's no uh, weird conversions that have to take place. And that's be we can see that because there's 100 Kelvin in the exact same measurement range as the 100 Celsius. But Fahrenheit, of course, is different, um, 180 versus 100, and that's why we're going to have to have a conversion factor that I'm honestly just going to recommend that you memorize. What are those conversion factors? It's probably easiest to go over them with an example. So let's work one example here together. If we've got our 32.1 degrees Celsius, like we said, going to Kelvin is easiest because Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So you'd think that you could just throw that right in here, the 32.1 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, and you'd be able to type in, get your number, and away you go. Remember your significant figures. And remember that we have to use the number of significant figures that it comes from our lowest, uh, least precise measurement. In this case, we only have one measurement. It's the 32.1. So you're thinking three. Great. So my final answer should only have three sig figs. Because this is addition, we have to use the addition and subtraction rules. The addition and subtraction rules are easiest to see if we write out our problem as so follows. So the 273.15, and then as clearly as we can, and I'm going to try very hard here, we want to line up our tens, ones, and tenths place. So we do that stacking addition thing here. It doesn't change our answer in terms of the number. But what it does let us see is 32.1, that tenths place on the 32, that's our measurement and it's our least precise decimal point. So we need to drop a line just to the right of it. So everything here to the left of the line is going to be eligible to be a significant digit. Everything to the right isn't. The five is going to tell our two to go up. So our final answer will be 305.2 Kelvin. If you only, if you applied the multiplication and division rules, you're going to end up with 305 Kelvin. And that would be incorrect because you're not using your significant figures uh, rules for addition and subtraction correctly. So following said rules is going to be important, and it's going to be important when you're doing unit conversions. So we did Celsius to Kelvin. That was the easy one. Let's go and let's do the hard one now. So to Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to use the equation 9 fifths times our temperature in Celsius plus 32. Um, and for completeness sake, we're going to say it's 32.0. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's start plugging and chugging. So we've got degrees Fahrenheit equals nine fifths times our original 32.1 degrees degrees C plus 32. So we take the nine times the 32.1, then divide by five, and we get ourselves a nice little 57 point uh, seven, eight. Great. I know for temperature, I said, or I know for rounding, I said, don't do it till the end, but because we're using a conversion factor here, um, this temperature is the one area where I'm going to give you a leeway about not rounding at the end. Go ahead and do your rounding here. If you do your rounding, this is a multiplication problem. It's the 32.1 that's the measurement, not the 9 or the 5. So our final answer should have 3 sig figs because the 9 and the 5 aren't measurements. So because we should have 3 sig figs, we should have 57.8 plus our 32.0. Now in this case, because we've got everything uh, ending there in the tenths place, I think it's easy enough to see that we're not going to have to worry about dropping that line like we did in the above problem. So we can go ahead and do our addition here. And as we do such, we're going to, well, I'm going to actually write it out because I didn't write out the answer. So the 57.8 plus 32.0898 and degrees F. So that's a basic breakdown of how to do those different conversion factors. If I were you, I would not spend a bunch of time learning a different equation for going between Celsius and Fahrenheit and uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Just go into the equation, just, just learn the equation that's highlighted here in green. Then plug in the appropriate number in the appropriate place. So if you were given a Fahrenheit temperature and you needed to solve for Celsius, just plug in the Fahrenheit temperature where the Fahrenheit is in said equation, then solve for your degree Celsius. Just treat it like it's an algebra problem and a plug and chug kind of thing. That way you don't have to memorize a bunch of equations that you don't need to. You got other things you got to do with your life. We'll be practicing a couple more of these uh, temperature conversion problems when we meet in discussion sections as well. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching.